Hello everyone, we are in the last part, part 6 of the subject we culture here in Korea. And again, after this part, we will have a quick painless quiz just to see that we are advancing and learning and developing. And today we will continue to talk about the feeling, kibun. And last time we were talking about kibun and its complexity of feeling. Today I would like to discuss a little bit more about the differences between chong that we learn and kibun as two of those concepts are part of the we culture and we kind of feeling but they still have differences between them. The first difference is basically chong is something that is shared between people. It's a feeling that is shared between two people but kibun is focused on someone else's feeling. I don't have to feel that with them. It's just their feeling. Another difference is generally chong is positive and kibun can be a mix of emotion. It can be a positive with negative emotion. It can be loneliness while feeling together. It's very complex feeling and it's a mix of emotions. Another difference would be that chong is a very strong bond that maintained its status. Kibun would be ever-changing and different all the time. And in different times of the day, I can have various kibuns. And when I meet the same person, my kibun can be completely different. Another thing that is worth mentioning, it's not really a difference, but it's worth mentioning is that when we have a collective positive and repeated kibun feeling, it can lead to chong between this collective, either two people or a group. So it's possible that a kibun that is repeated all the time and we have this strong positive feeling can develop into chong at the end. Now that we understand the differences between chong and kibun, let's see some uses of kibun and some examples for that as well. So the first example will be delivering bad news later than sooner. So let's say we have a team meeting every Monday. Instead of opening with the bad news, a lot of the times in Korean teams, they will save the bad news to either the end of the meeting or sometimes even the end of the day because we would like to make a good feeling first and then after establishing a good environment and good feeling of all the team members, then we can deliver softly the bad news. Another example that I would like to share is when an employee is let go from the company, a lot of the times the employee will leave the company on a Friday to close the week in order to save face and to keep other people feeling. So they will not have to deal with the fact that he's leaving maybe on a Monday and then they have the rest of the week without him or they might think about it the rest of the week. And then in this example, the employee that was let go and the team can process it during the weekend, for example. As we mentioned, telling a lie or maybe half-truth is another way to maintain somebody's good feeling or maybe not making somebody hurt or maybe not making somebody's worse. Depends on the case. So it can happen as well. Another thing that we can see, and it's related to the subject that we learn in communication staff, is not saying no in order to save face and in order to maintain someone's kibun or someone's feeling. And again, that is part of the reason people do not say no so direct. So those are a few examples just to give you a taste of the way that people maintain kibun and maintain that kind of feeling of others and why it is so important. And that also concludes our subject of we culture. I hope that now you can understand a little bit more about the we and the forces that exist between two people or a group of people. And I hope it also can help you with your Korean partners or stakeholders. And yet again, we will have a quick quiz after this part. So go ahead and do that quiz and I will see you next subject.